So the next one. The likeness of the one spirit. So another way, obviously, we know the Prophet وسلم, in the last ten days he would strive. Because obviously Layla Qadr is a a month in um <coughs> sorry, Layla Qadr is most likely in the last ten. The Prophet وسلم, what would he do? He'd, he'd, spend, he'd engage himself in Etikaf. So Etikaf the way I deal with Etikaf anyway, as I said, this is this is that people have different approaches with Etikaf. There was this story about this uh, Jack Canfield. Does, any, does anyone know Jack Canfield? Yeah, he's like a character um, development uh, coach, these personal development coaches. So he's got this book called The Sixty Print, no, The Success Principles or something. And he talked about he went on this um, silent retreat. And this, when he speaks about this, it really summed up Etty Care for me. He said, I went on this retreat for about seven days. You know these like Buddhist retreats where you sit in silence. You're not allowed to speak at all. So. Sorry? Yeah, so they sit there, just don't stamp him, stamp on his foot because he might speak. <laughs> they sit there for days and they don't talk. And they just sit there and they have food, they go out for a walk, but the rest of it they have to sit there in silence. How would that be? <laughs> so, what, so what he did, he sat for the first day, he said, my mind was going mad. He said, please, what are you doing here? Jack, you're an idiot. You could be like, you know, working on your business plan. You could be doing this, you could be doing that. And he really was just like thinking, I'm wasting my time here. He got really frustrated. Second day, it continued. Third day, it continued. Fourth day, his mind shut up. It ran, it ran out of conversation. And he said, I suddenly, for the first time in my life, he said, I felt a voice, a real voice come from me. Like, it's like his true self. And all this, this stuff that was just other people's thought of word, like voices in his head, basically. Um, and he said, I felt such clarity, I knew where I was going in life. Um, and then when he came out of it, of the retreat, he said, obviously, all, the, all of it came back to me. But he said it, there was a difference. He says, when I did this silence, I could still hear that like, primordial voice, basically, guiding me. But it, was, it wasn't as loud as it was when I was in the retreat. It was like, you know when you sit in the playground, with your you can hear all your children, you can pick out your kid's voice mm. out of all the... M mothers probably can relate to this more. Mm. They, can hear, they, they know their child's voice out of all their, the other children. He says it was like that. So the voices came back, but he, had more to, uh, he was able to distinguish more what was the right calling within him. And I thought that was very profound. Like, even in the, in the etikaf, you, you know, it's, you have to speak because you've got to pray. And the Uncle G's, they're hardcore in the Etikaf. You know, they basically, they, if you've seen them, they basically won't, they, 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 they like, won't see it, speak to anyone. And they're hitting the Qur'an. And to an element, I think there's a bit of wisdom in that. And that's what, because when initially when I first did the Etikafs, I would basically use it as an opportunity to start teaching people. Because it's, it's the only opportunity usually for the lads, isn't it, to come in, get away, and so you educate them in the religion. And I'm not dissing that, because there is a, there's a need for that, to educate the youth and get people in. But for me, I thought that defeats the purpose to a certain extent, for it on a personal level. Because it's a real opportunity just to just cut off from all response, all obligations, and to just engage with the Qur'an. So what I did, for, I, I managed to do it two years, I'm doing it in a row, was um, I was just, my whole day was filled with either rest or reading Qur'an constantly with tafsir. So I read tafsir. So I managed to do that 10 days. I didn't speak to hardly anyone. The only temptation was, you know, when you're gathering for, for break our iftar. But I'd just make it light the talk and then I'd go straight in. And uh, so I think everyone should do that once in their life where they're basically 10 days, you're just not even engaging with anyone but the Qur'an because that is the calling. You'll hear the clarity through Allah's word and your prayers. And so, I th and that's what the Prophet Sassam did. He didn't engage with anyone in the, in the Itikaf. The only time was his wife, one, his wife, which was Juwali, I think, or um, I can't believe it was one of, um, no, he was, he was Jewish, Sophia, the Jewish wife. She got, she got a bit lonely because she, she's only recently married to the Prophet Sallallahu and she was a bit alone at home. <coughs> and so she um, would come in and visit him at certain times and he'd speak to her. And the intention here was to give her solace, which is a, a real wisdom because, for example, when I did it to Gaff, my wife would feel a bit lonely because we don't have children. And so I would phone her uh, on, the, so, uh, on the mobile phone just once a day and say, how are you and everything, is everything okay? Just so she knows there's some, I'm still asking after her. And so it show, so it's not that you become so rigid. 
I'm not speaking to you. You know, you know the people get like this, don't they, with their religious worship? And suddenly, oh, I've got all the original. Excuse me. Like, no, you, you if someone. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> so the, um, the 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 wisdom here is that no, you have to be a bit flexible. But that's the that's the the target is to to try to minimise as much engagement as possible. So I think that's what I I believe that people really benefit. Obviously, women. In the Hanifi school, they say that it's permissible for a woman to do itikaf at at home, and so she just has a place of worship. They say, you know, whatever room where she's least disturbed, and she tries to get other people to take on the responsibilities. If she can't, it is permissible for her to leave her itikaf and cook if she needs to, but she should try to set up the means whereby um, try to maximise on the itikaf as much as she possibly can. But if there's a need to leave, so you go to the bathroom, relieve yourself, and if you no one else can tend to your food, it is permissible for you to go out of your itikaf to do that. Yeah. Um, regarding so like itikaf was used if you kill like, itikaf like the optimum itikaf would be like in just Quran, Quran, yeah. Quran, right? So why if somebody has like daily words and it's not it's not it's not from the Sunnah, for example it's yeah. like to ask from Sheikh and for example. Oh, yeah. Would it be better to drop them to maintain Quran as much as you can? That's up to the individual to decide. Okay? It's n this is not about a do do or don't. Right. This is just you know, about what you what you feel you is best for you. Nothing's obligatory here, so you just choose to do what you find. If, for example, if one doesn't have prescribed rules, so like, for example, somebody doesn't have a sheikh, but mm. he treats it, would it be better for him to just maintain the Quran? Well, as I said, go with what you feel as well. In the end, it's all dhikr, yeah. because the Quran's dhikr as well. You know, it's good to variegate your worship. So the Allah's variegated worship for a wisdom, so you don't tire of doing the same thing. Mm. So in your relaxation times, you can use it. It's, you do a bit of istighfar instead of Quran. It's not about what's right and what's wrong here. It's just about what you, you know, you have a, a goal and what you want to achieve, and you do. So not becoming so fixated that I've got to do this. Um, so just the being there is worship anyway. Well, what's it? the wisdom? The, the, I've got the quote. This is Abdar's quote. The, <coughs> he was one of the early. He's a Tabi'i scholar. He was one of the early scholars, uh, second generation. The likeness of one in spiritual is like he was frequent, frequent a grand door for a need. It's as if he says, "I will not leave until I'm forgiven." So the, the, really the wisdom of Yeti Kafi is the whole purpose is you're sitting between prayers, waiting for the prayers. So all your prayers are in jama'ah. And the one who waits for a prayer, it's like he's always in prayer. As long as you're sitting in the mosque waiting for a prayer, it's as if you're in prayer. And so that's the wisdom of uh, Yeti Kafi. That's really the purpose, you're waiting for prayers. And obviously you're for later to Qadr to, to be in the mosque praying when it's late to Qadr. So, Shaggy, for ladies, I mean, you're saying Hanif opinion is to do at home. Yes. Well, well, is it allowed for the ladies to put other opinions that... They don't okay. consider valid the etikaf. In the other schools, oh, there's no etikaf except in a mosque. Oh, but yeah. it's Only the Hanif school have that, and that's a dispensation for people, because obviously most mosques don't cater for women anyway. Yeah, okay. And so, you, you, you can do it at home. Or you know what a woman could do if it's like if it's too rowdy, she makes the intention that I'm going to go stay at a friend's house where I do it to care, and that mm -hmm. way you're less distracted. Mm -hmm. So I was just going to say, can a woman do like a like a public one, like with a few members of her family in one house? The reality is, you just it won't be counted as a it calf. But it was, whatever you do, you know, do a few days, do one here, do, do what you can as possible. If it, you know, if you want to congregate people to do this, it's not, it's not whether something's valid or invalid. But it won't be counted as an itikaf. Okay. But the, I don't, I, I want people to look beyond that because people become so fixated upon I've got to do the sunni itikaf, but they become like completely compulsive about the thing, like oh my god, I walked out here and this valid and all this sort of thing. You, you're missing the purpose. The purpose is to get away. And to have that time to engage and and move uh, put aside all distractions and just give it your all in those those ten days. So so for example in Morocco it's not it's not a common practice etikaf in the mosques at all. Imam Malik didn't even consider etikaf something meritorious because he said the scholars of his time didn't practice it. But the reason they didn't practice it, I believe, is probably because it, no, it was a time of real of teaching knowledge, and so they were really like impressive uh, impressed. The teaching of knowledge, and so he didn't see the people of Medina practicing it. That's Imam Malik's position on that. But what what what? It's in, in Morocco. You'll find it's not that common to be done. But people do it like in the zawiyas and the different like centres. Yeah. Uh, it's not a valid itikaf because it's going to be in the mosque. But you're doing something. 
So, you know, don't become so fixated. You know, people used to come and say, you know, cows aren't valid. Yeah. Oh, God, give the, give the people a break. They're doing something nice and, like, connecting to Allah in the last ten days. You know, whatever, do something. You know, don't just say, I can't do it because it's not valid, and then you lose out on any good. So.